let's see a practical demonstration of whatever we have seen in our previous video here i have an application spring boot application with that uses key cloak for the authentication process i'm checking this out on spring boot 3 the library needed to communicate between the key cloak and the resource server is this OAuth 2 resource server and i'm using the database con connection and hence i'm using starter data jpa to connect to the mariadb and this is the default one for the rest api implementations here since we have seen we needed five different tables and for each of those tables i have created an entity for example for menu table menu entity so similarly we have other entities as well like restaurant order and all that stuff i'm not going in detail into these to communicate between the database and this resource server i have added the repositories jpa repository for each of the table and these repositories will be used in the controller classes we have restaurant controller here for restaurants list of restaurant and getting the menu for each restaurant and whatever the uh, functionalities we have seen in the use case diagram are being implemented here one thing to note here is we have not added any authorization yet first we'll look into the authentication and then we'll dive into the authorization similarly we have order controller to get the orders create order and get order detail since we needed a security filter which in internally uses the oauth 2's resource library this library we need to create a configuration class and we also need to enable the web security we are creating a security filter chain bean before going over here one thing you can see if you have worked on earlier spring boots you might have seen the methods that were used as like this i mean without using any of the lambda functions inside as the parameter but these are now deprecated and are planned to be removed in spring framework 7 and hence i would recommend not to use these i am disabling the csrf and here if you see what we are doing is for every request we we are asking spring security to make sure the request is authenticated as we had discussed there are two ways of authenticating using the oauth resource server one was jwt and this is what the jwt mean since we do not want to override any of the internal functionalities we we are using the customizer with defaults i don't want the spring security to create a session for our request and hence i'm making it as stateless and also for uh, jwt we needed a configuration for issuer you'll see here in the application dot properties i have added this resource server issuer url and this url is picked up from the key cloak itself let me show that as well here in dream settings if you just click on this open id end point configurations you will find the issuer here itself this is the issuer key and the value for the issuer is this one the same thing has been used in here let me start the application so to get a valid token from the key cloak i am using this rest apis you have already seen this in our previous videos here client id is spring boot be which is here client id this one client secret is this which is picked up from the credentials from here grant type is password username is sagar and password is demo123 let's request for the token and this is our access token and here's a rest api to get the list of restaurants although these two apis uh, should have been public apis in a sense we do not need any of the token but right now we we are just checking on the authentication and these as well are going to be authenticated so for this rest api if i request without sending any token it says unauthorized and if i use the same token which i have generated a while ago and send you'll get the list of restaurants 
now if I change the issuer and restart the server let's see here dev dev one just for our testing purpose start the server again if I request now it says it is unauthorized and the reason being the issuer is incorrect you can see here it says problem with the issuer let's roll this back since the user is logged in we'll find a session in here for Sagar what I'm going to do is I'm going to log out so using this refresh token on this API client ID and client secret are similar to what we have used in the login and log out if I log out you'll see there won't be any session and for the user Sagar as well the session has been removed from the key cloak but if I use the same access token here and request oops sorry if I request so you'll get the response and the reason behind this is JWT doesn't hit the key cloak and instead it validates the token within the resource server itself let's change this to opaque token now here opaque token we don't need this configuration here but instead we need these three configurations client id client secret for opaque token and introspection uri the client id and client secret are similar to what we have seen a while ago in the token generation and this introspection uri you will find it in the key clock itself here in the same configurations if you search for introspection endpoint this one the value of this endpoint is used here let's start the server since we are using opaque token the request will be going to the key clock itself since this token was working on JWT although this was logged out let's see if this works when we are using opaque token send it is unauthorized so I'm going to generate a new token let's see here sessions it has been created just now you can see here 959 and we'll use this access token send it works if I log out again log out check if the token is there it's not there and unauthorized so this was it about the authentication in the next video we will see about the authorization in detail and uh, We'll see the demonstration for that as well. Thanks for watching.